others down below who I follow and watch their YouTube tutorials. They do a lot more of like painting tutorials, teaching you how to paint and things like that. And a few other questions have asked me to do kind of more tutorial videos like that. And I just, I want to defer to them because they've been doing it a lot longer than I have. They have a great way of teaching and they already have videos out for you to watch for free on YouTube. So I'll link some of theirs down below. Ones that come to mind are Chelsea Lang, uh, Paint Coach, uh, Ian Roberts. People like them are great, great painters and have so many good tutorials on YouTube already. Another question I got was advice on how to become a full-time artist, how to start making money from your art, from your career, and how I'm doing that. And my simple answer is that you have to have a lot of different streams of income as an artist. I think there's this big idea that in order to be a full-time artist, you have to be living off solely sales from paintings, from prints, from things like that. And I don't think that's realistic or sustainable and honestly it's kind of scary um, because you know those things change with time and for me it's a lot better to diversify my income through you know ads on YouTube sponsorships with companies that I've been able to do thanks to you all watching my channel I have made money from selling art and commissions and things like that but it's not my sole source of income right now and I think that's okay. I still consider myself a full-time artist. Kelsey Rodriguez is another art YouTuber and she has great videos about how to actually make money as an artist, selling online, you know, all the different social media aspects of it. So I recommend you watch her video on it. She does a great job of laying it all out for you in a really easy to understand way. Someone asked, I would love to know how you become a full-time artist. For someone like me who has no idea, do you just quit your job and make art? How do you make money and get noticed? How do you get customers when you've never made art before and no one knows who you are? And I think social media, I mean, I have a degree in social media marketing. I don't have an art degree. Um, so I think it's really opened my eyes to the different avenues and paths that people can take to become a full-time artist these days. Becoming an artist, I think in general, even people who go the traditional route of like going to galleries and like things like that, is all about building a community, even a clientele that knows your art, wants to buy your art, loves what you do, and wants to support you through that way. And social media has made that a possibility for so many people who are just starting out with art, who are just sharing their art journey online. So of course that's going to be my advice to you is to utilize, you know, the good aspects of social media um, and just start sharing your art with people because I think that's something that a lot of people also connect to. For an artist, it is obviously about the art you're making, but it's also about you. It's about what you're bringing to the art that you're creating and how your story kind of ties into that, how your interests are seen through every piece of art that you work on, through every new subject matter that you're exploring. I don't think there's any shame with keeping a part-time job. You know, we have to be <laughs> responsible and logical and pay our bills and things like that. Getting a part-time job and working on your art career, if you're not able to do that, I know it's a very privileged position. I know a lot of full-time artists who still have full-time jobs and it's all about making those sacrifices in the present to work for a future that you really want. Another question that ties into becoming a full-time artist that I got was, how was I able to financially pursue art full-time? And this is... Hey, go fresh is fresh with Lynx Africa. Still fresh as fresh with the number one fragrance, the GOAT. And this is a very logical question and something that I did think about a lot before I made this decision. There is a lot of pressure to choose a career that is very stable, obviously, financially. And to an extent, that's very smart. Um, but for me, I also knew I needed to do a career that 
was going to make me stable mentally, if you get what I mean, doing something that I'm not going to hate for 40 plus years. And that's a very American way of thinking, I understand, a very privileged way of thinking. And I am privileged enough to have a partner that has a stable job that said, hey, I can support us for this amount of time while you try to get your art career up and running and if it doesn't start making enough money soon enough you know i said i would get a part-time job on top of trying to work on my art full time and for me it was something that i wasn't going to give my all to unless i had the pressure to give it my all so that's how i was able to make it work really cutting back on expenses saving up money from my past social media job and relying on my partner for our income while we don't have children or a lot of expenses or anything like that so for me like i said before diversifying my income so i'm not relying on one area for money every month it's really been the best option and again no shame at all in having a part-time job having a full-time job while you're trying to make your full-time art career happen how much money do you think you spent from all of your art materials? Um, a lot. <laughs> I'm not sure I actually want to add that up. It might be a little scary. Um, art supplies are very expensive, and the really good quality ones are even more expensive. So yes, a lot. I don't even think I could put a number on it. I've been buying art supplies since I was 15. <laughs> yep, they're expensive, but what can you do? Gotta have them. <laughs> I had a few questions about my personal life and things like that, so I'll answer some of them. Yes, I am married. I have been married for almost two years to my partner. Uh, we actually met in high school, uh, senior year of high school, and dated all throughout college and got married after college. So we have known each other for a very long time and have kind of been growing up together. You've probably seen him in some of my videos on here. His name is Brett. I got a few questions about my ethnicity, which I am used to growing up uh, mixed, um, but it's something that I'm very proud of, so I will share it with you all. I am half Chinese, and my dad is half Italian. My mom grew up in the Philippines, actually. She grew up in Manila, so she's Chinese, but her family um, grew up in the Philippines, so they speak Tagalog and all of that. Um, so I kind of have that cultural influence and the Chinese cultural influence. My favorite types of food are pasta or Chinese food, and I really do think they're the best, but I may be a little biased. I also got a lot of questions about starting a YouTube channel, growing an audience, how to edit videos, what apps do I use to edit my videos, filming equipment, so I'm going to answer all those questions in this one long rambling answer, probably. My best advice for someone starting a YouTube channel is you have to be okay with putting yourself out there, sharing very, you know, personal connections with your art, and there is going to be criticism. I don't want this to sound depressing and sad and not doing it, but if you are kind of just starting on your art journey, Make sure that starting a YouTube channel is not going to discourage you from continuing practicing your art because at the end of the day, that is what's most important. I know for myself, I don't think I was quite ready to receive that much, you know, opinions on my art and my life. I don't regret it, but it is something that I had to get used to and I do still consider myself like learning on my art journey. Have a realistic view of where you are with your skills and your art and know that people are going to make comments about that. But that's okay. Um, you're going to find so many more people who are encouraging, who are lovely, who leave the nicest comments I've ever read. Hold on to those people. That being said, I guess the more practical advice for starting a YouTube channel is to do a lot of research into how to film, how to edit video, sound quality. I have taken courses with Adobe that have taught me how to edit better, how to film better, just the ins and outs of video editing and how to use their program. I use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit all my videos, by the way. Um, not sponsored, but I love them. <laughs> Another practical advice for filming videos is that you can start using your phone. My first
first two videos I filmed entirely on my iPhone, um, and they are the videos that have the most views. So, I mean, what does that tell you before I even upgraded to a camera? It's totally possible to just film off your phone. Another practical advice is to buy a tripod. I have used a tripod that I got off Amazon for like $20 until very recently, um, and it worked great. Some questions about the equipment I use now, it's always linked below in the descriptions of my videos. Cetaphil's Hydrating Foaming Cream Cleanser cleanses without drying skin's barrier. a Canon EOS M50 to film my videos now and I love it. It's a great little vlogging camera. I've watched tons of videos on YouTube about filming, editing, how to film more cinematically. There's just so much free information out there that if you just take some time before you start your channel to really research how to do things more professionally, I think it's really going to pay off in the end. Who are some of my painting inspirations? Who are some of my favorite artists? Obviously, Monet, Van Gogh, Bonnard, um, Renoir, lots of Impressionist painters, um, John Singer Sargent, and tons of contemporary painters that I'll put their names like on the screen here because I can't think of all of them off the top of my head, but I follow lots of them on Instagram. Those are my inspirations. The connection that I seem to find through all these people is that their brushwork is so interesting. They're painting more loosely. They're painting a little more impressionistically. For me, I just love seeing how someone has so much control over their brushwork to be able to use, you know, limited strokes to present something so realistically but simply. If you have any artists that you love, that you think I'll love, Please send them to me. I love looking at art and finding new inspirations all the time. The best way to start selling your art, how to sell it online, how to not sell it online. And this is not something I can speak to greatly off of my own knowledge, but I have been doing research into this because I do want to start selling my art online, um, original things, prints, things like that. That's kind of my next big step in my art journey. I know there are art fairs. Maybe your community has a weekend farmer's market. You can set up a table there. You can sell to your friends and family that you know just to get started. But for me, I would say selling online is a great way to go. I think, I mean, this is going to be something I say all the time in my background with social media marketing. Like, use it to your advantage. Use TikTok, use Instagram Reels, use YouTube to create a community of people that love what you're creating and love your vision as an artist. And if you offer things to them, offer your pieces that they've seen you create in your videos and in your Instagram posts, I think they're gonna connect with that and want to support you and own a piece of your art. There are so many artists that I follow online that I've bought pieces from, I want to start buying more pieces from artists that I've followed online for a long time. And it's just because you have that connection with them, you know, and you love what they're creating. How do you set boundaries with social media and YouTube as a content creator? I spend obviously a lot of my time on social media, creating things for social media. The thing I've done most importantly, I think, is to dedicate days of my work week to filming days, content creation days, and then days where I'm not doing any of that. And I think that kind of helps set a boundary so that I don't feel like I have to film every aspect of my life, every single thing I'm doing, and that way you can still keep a boundary from your personal, private life, and the things that you choose to share on social media. I had a lot of questions about people dealing with art block, how do I find inspiration. Whenever I'm feeling art block or lack of inspiration, I actually made a whole video about it if you want to watch that, but short answer is I just try to get out of my comfort zone and take off some pressure. Do something for fun, um, paint something you never would. How is your creativity after so many new subscribers? Does it cause you anxiety? It does cause a little anxiety because obviously I want to keep creating content for you and putting out videos, but something that I've done that's kind of helped that is just to 
take pressure off what I'm creating and just sharing my journey as it comes. So not being so strict about, oh, I need to create a large oil painting every video. I need to create 10 sketches every video. I'm kind of like when I'm sharing my art journey with you all, I'm really just sharing how I'm learning what I'm doing that week in my practice, what I'm doing to improve my art skills at that time. I'm just trying to keep it really honest and open with you guys that not every week am I creating large oil paintings. Sometimes I'm just focusing on practicing anatomy. That's how I kind of keep that anxiety at a minimum. I'm not forcing myself to do things that I'm not ready to do creatively. I'm just sharing my literal journey. Hope you enjoyed this video and this q and a had a lot of fun i feel like i'm kind of talking to you guys in a more conversational way and there were so many questions i wish i could have answered them all you can support me by leaving a like comment and subscription i am wishing you the best and i will see you next time showing you this but the studio is a complete mess i cannot get any work done i feel like the last time i painted i moved everything around and i haven't moved it back yet so i decided i'm going to do a part two to the studio makeover i want to take a quick second to thank ruggable as the sponsor of today's video they were so kind to send over one of their beautiful rugs and it gave me the idea to finish up making over the studio and so i'm very excited to show you the rug that they sent me I think it's gonna look great in this space. But I have big plans to finish up the makeover, get some new curtains, some new frames for the paintings that I've been doing, and overall just like clean up and organize. So I have a lot of work to do. Let's get started. It's been six months since I've been working in this studio, and things have gotten cluttered. Not all of the space is being used efficiently, like this corner where things just pile up on the floor. <laughs> so this makeover part two is going to focus on better looking organization and finding a desk for more table space to set still lifes up on. 
I also want to get more decorative elements like a new rug, shelves, and curtains. Thanks. Thanks again to Ruggable for sponsoring today's video. Working in my art studio can get pretty messy, as you saw before I cleaned up, but luckily my new Ruggable rug is machine washable and stain resistant, so when spills happen, I can throw it in the washing machine and it comes out looking good as new. I love that their rugs are both beautiful and practical. They come with rug pads that make them non-slip and stay in place, which is great because I'm constantly moving things around in here. I think this rug really livens up the space and emphasizes the greenery outside. You can click the link in the description and use code AshleyKingArt10 for 10% off your next purchase. can't express how happy I am with this little desk I found. I think it's perfect for this corner and adds some character to the room. It'll be great to have more table space to dry paintings on, set up still lifes, and make this side of the studio feel more useful.
so cute and small, and I think it's gonna look really good on this little desk I just got. Since I've been painting with panels more now, I found that they're hard to hang on the walls without getting them framed. So I decided to add these floating shelves to this wall. This way, I'll be able to display more current artwork, kind of like it's my own rotating gallery. I can dream. Finishing the studio today. <laughs> I think the world kind of gives artists a bad reputation for being messy, unorganized, and a little chaotic. While I'm definitely all these things when I'm in the act of creating, I find it hard to be productive if my studio is in that kind of state for long. Something I've been learning more about from other working artists is that to make a living out of your art, you have to keep your life organized and balanced. Just like with any other job, deadlines and daily schedules are so important to achieve your goals. Working artists can be just as motivated and disciplined in their jobs as anyone else. So taking the time to make my office or studio clean, organized and decorated has really increased my motivation to be open to creativity and get painting. I can't believe it's been six months since I posted my first YouTube video about turning this room into my art studio. Reminiscing on my goals and aspirations then, I could have never predicted this would be the outcome. I want to say thank you for supporting me, believing in me, and encouraging me to keep going. I wish I could go back in time and tell my younger self to hold on to her artistic passions and trust in herself to make it happen. All 100,000 of you, which is crazy by the way, have given me the chance to make art full time, and I'll never take that for granted. For anyone out there hoping to dedicate their lives to art, my best advice is cheesy, but it's to believe in yourself and keep practicing. Something changed in me when I finally started calling myself an artist and telling people I wanted to do it full time. 
It gave me no other choice, and I knew I had to make it work, even if it took years. That inner trust in myself is really what kept me going. So thank you again for all your support, and know I'm always wishing you the best on your art journeys, and I'm so happy we're doing this together. Thanks so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hi friends, I wanted to do another Q&A video today. I'm trying to answer some questions that I haven't... I'm trying to fix it on here, but I don't want to be using too dark of a pencil. But if I use the same pencil, it's going to be hard. Truly a challenge. I like the punk bit, the punking bit. You can see there's a texture in the leaves. Then you've got the lighter tones on the actual punking edible part. Well, the skin for the punking, anyway. Some people might eat it. haven't ever before in my past Q&A videos. Things about setting a good work-life balance, artistic goals, dealing with negativity or loneliness, and some more practical questions about starting up a YouTube channel and running an art business online. And I'll be painting this little watercolor painting from a picture I took in Florence while I answer these questions for you. So sit back and enjoy. How are you able to make good quality art so consistently? I find sometimes I can make a good piece, but then another day I'm just struggling to draw and feel like I'm starting again. Also, do you have any tips or resources you use to improve your art, particularly when it's self-taught? Well, thank you, but I can say that I also feel this way, and I think that's part of my mindset shift that helps me keep practicing so consistently. I don't make good quality paintings every single time. I don't think any artist really does. Obviously, everyone's skill level is very different, so your opinion of a good painting might be different than someone else's. I think this especially happens when we are comparing our work to others on social media. We kind of get this idea that we need to be creating on the same level as someone else, even though they may have had years of more experience than we have. Have. So it's kind of not fair to compare yourself to someone that has that much more experience and put in more time practicing. But something that helps me is to just remember that the more bad paintings you get out, the closer you'll get to that one good painting again that you've been trying to make for a while. Not every painting is going to be 10 times better than the last. For any tips or resources that I've used to improve my art as someone that's mostly self-taught, there's lots of great channels on YouTube and I will list them in the description below or on the screen here because I don't want to mess up their names off the top of my head and they are great resources that are free online that will get you started. The worst thing about these pencils is simple. You have to keep a sharp point. But if it's a mechanical pencil, you don't need to. expensive.
will say that I'm trying to write my own music with guitar so that every time when I have a video on YouTube in the future that hour length will have music created by me I'm not saying that the music will be good because they'd be pretty bad but I keep getting complaints about music in the background playing there's a lot of people that have music in the background playing but I question whether they get told off for it or not If it was mechanical, crap. I need a pencil extender. I don't know why my one's gone. Is underneath that's two and get three. Let's start doing it from here. If I could turn my time, I would have chosen art in high school, but I'm living with doubts about what I could achieve and accomplish. And that's because I took something to heart. The bad thing about pencils is the nib breaks off. But when you're painting, you don't get that. Oh, come on, shut up. Don't do that one so I can see the big one.
said somebody in here. Now I haven't had any sales, I haven't had anyone liking my videos, but I please like them. But even though I haven't had those likes, I still come back to it and progress. But having the likes, having more people following and supporting the artwork would benefit me a great deal. The problem with drawing is that it's easy to smudge the work. You're always touching the paper. Even if you get one of those gloves to go on your hand that's supposed to prevent smudging, it still smudges.